Hi everyone, I'm Tracy Watts. Welcome to Mercer Health News. Today, I have a special guest, Mercer President and CEO, Martin Ferland. Welcome, Martin. Well, thank you so much for inviting me, Tracy. I'm excited to be here and discussing this topic with you. My pleasure. Um, our topic today is gender diversity in the workforce. So, Martine, as you know from our own research, there's a lot of positive intent and good work that goes on, and yet we're still only at 40% representation of women in the workforce. And the one stat that really got my attention was the latest list that was published in 2021 of global Fortune 500 companies. Um, we're now at 41 that are run by women. That is up from 37 last year. And there are two women of color on the list. Last year, there was only one. And so, you know, the trend looks like it's moving in the right direction. And yet we know that there's a lot of work to be done. Um, and we really see evidence of the pandemic taking its toll on the careers of women. What do you feel you know, the, the biggest gender parity issues are, especially in light of the pandemic? Although the latest numbers of um, return to work, the job growth in the last month were more positive for women than in previous months. So there may be some hope here, but you're right. It'll take, as usual, focus. But I think as we rebuild, as we reset, we absolutely need to continue to reset for diversity and inclusion. Uh, we all know, and it's been proven times and times again, that uh, diversity fuels performance. As you said, the pandemic has uh, rolled back some of the um, gains that were made by women in the workforce, mainly because the industries that were most impacted employ a large proportion of women, but also because we're still battling out some societal and be behavioral stereotypes and, and ways of, of living, really. Uh, that meant that many of the women have taken the, the brunt of uh, the at-home schooling or taking care of people who were ill. Um, so we all know, with, as you said, with our When Women Thrive research, what type of programs really yield results and what you need to do to uh, move that needle faster. So um, let me tell you what we're going to do today. Um, you'll recall March 8th was International Women's Day, and we were just all really inspired by the posts on social media and just everything that women shared about their careers and their journey. And we wanted to keep the dialogue alive. So we spoke with three of our clients about the good work that they are doing, as well as some advice for supporting gender diversity. And so what I wanna do is share with you and everyone else a few video clips from those conversations and, and we can chat about them. Um, before I do that, let me just tell you who our guests are. Um, we spoke with Ann Addison, who is the Chief Human Resources Officer at Northrop Grumman. We also spoke with Janice Dupre, who is the Executive Vice President of Human Resources at Lowe's. And then um, our third guest is Mary McNiff. Mary is the Chief Compliance Officer at Citi. And actually, prior to um, being taking on that role in, in June of last year, she was the CEO of Citibank North America. So some, some very high-level females um, in corporate America here in the United States. So we covered several topics in the videos, and we're going to start off with Ann Addison as she talks about gender equity progress. The other day, I was just thinking, I have worked almost 40 years. And wow, when I think about when I started and where we have come in gender equity, it, it overwhelms me. We've made so much progress. My first manager, I was pregnant after I'd gone to the workforce for about a year. And he said, well, you're not gonna come back. And I said, of course I'm coming back. And he said, no, women are barefoot and in the kitchen. And by the way, we read this and he really said this to me. So we have come a long, long way. I have to say, I can so relate to what Anne had to say. I'm about to have my 35 year anniversary at Mercer and we have been at this a long time. I'm actually really proud of how early we were in starting the, the, the process to make the progress that we have. But, you know, I'm curious, Martine, like what did you think about Anne's remarks? 
Yeah, well, I like her optimism and her sense of progress. And like you, um, more years than I care to admit or count anymore. And I think the three of us uh, are in the same ballpark there. And obviously, I mean, it feels very much different. I mean, look at this, we're just these three women talking about and, and actually now, more than that coming in the next videos coming. But at the same time, you did quote earlier on the number of women CEOs uh, today. It's 11% more than last year, you, but it's still just 8% of Fortune 500 companies. So it's going, it's changing, but it's too slow for us to really reap the, the, the benefits of a full diversity and also of having the participation of women in the workforce, not just for the diversity of thinking, but also for the growth of GDP, the growth of our economies. Yes, those are all just great proof points of um, what, what doors can be opened up for those companies that really do um, everything that they can to, to, to promote diversity. And I know, you know, I, I, our, our daughters, um, they, don't, they don't know what we've gone through in the 80s, but I'm wondering if they find that easy today. I don't think they would say they find it easier. Uh, so it'd be interesting to have a conversation with the younger generation on that one. Well, that might be a topic for our next video together. So I'll be sure and, and take a note on that one. Um, the next video is with Janice and she talks about using analytics. So let's take a look at that. I had one of our leaders when I first got here and they were fairly new here. They said, I think I have a problem with this population. And I said, and I said, so I'm curious how they showed up on the opinion survey. So I just pulled out the report and I said, nope, that's not your problem. This is your problem. And let's see where their problem is. So then we went down the questions and we looked at it and said, ah, they're not feeling connected here. So in order to really address equality, you got to know what's not equal. What's not, what is the problem? To, uh, to, to deal with bias, you got to deal with facts and you got to demystify a lot of this stuff and not work off of assumptions and help people not speculate, but get to the facts and let's go after that from a strategic perspective and not, I think we have a problem. Let's be sure. So, um, you know, Janice seems to really rely a lot on data. As you can tell, she clearly has a passion for data. I'm very interested, Martine, are there certain data elements that we track and you look at? What is your advice for other HR professionals on analytics? No, absolutely. You know, I think data is one of the important components of really moving the needle here. If you don't know your data, how can you make uh, the right interventions? Actually, in our um, latest review of surveys of employers, 80% of them were saying we're focused on DEI. Yet again, 40% don't track their flows. They're in and they're out and they're up. Um, and another 40% of them really don't have a systematic process to look at pay equity at every pay cycle. So I, I think if you ask me, um, I, Two, two points on metrics. Uh, well, the first one was that it is critical to have the data in hand. So I totally with Janice on this one. But the two points I would make is um, one, um, average is lie. So I'm here the actuary, so speaking. Uh, you look at an average and it may look all good. You need to unpack that data point to look at different countries, different units, and make sure that you don't have pain points in some places that are actually slowing you down or getting your, your stats. So you, you have to identify that this unpacking of data really helps you identify where your intervention will have the most impact um, in changing the composition of your, um, of your workforce. And the second point I would say is we track at Mercer, you asked me what we track. Everybody think, think about hiring and retention and promotion. But one thing that we've introduced some years ago that I find is critical. So you don't want to promote people just because you have quotas or you focus on it. You right. want people that are ready for the roles. And therefore, you need to track the metrics, what I call the upstream activities. Look at what type of roles in your organization lead to better retention, more seniority in roles, 
and make sure that you have the gender diversity in these what I call upstream roles, whether it is people management, project management, client management, whatever it is in your own organization, track the upstream metrics because then the rest of it will follow. So the metrics are critically important for our next topic, which is accountability. And in this video, we actually hear from all three of our guests on the topic of accountability. I know that many companies are thinking about this, particularly as we go through a time of COVID and the impact that it's had on to the female workforce. It's a big focus for us at City and making sure that we're trying to make everyone's life a little bit easier in this time of a global pandemic is key to the success. As an HR professional, I do feel a big part of my job is to make sure that there's not bias in the systems to continuously look at our promotions, our hiring, do we have a diverse pipeline, to look at performance reviews, are we being fair, do we have inequities, pay. Um, I do think as an HR professional, as a CHRO, that is my job here at Northrop Grumman to make sure that we absolutely are looking at people fairly. You have to get clear that this is a commitment from the starting at the top of the house, all the way through the organization. And for us, that starts with our board of directors. Our board is very diverse. Our executive leadership team is very diverse. And then I would say not just, just gender and, and ethnicity, but then experience, right? Then now you start driving accountability. So accountability, our guests had a lot to say about that. And I have to say, this is my favorite of all the clips because I think this is where it all comes true. What did you think about their remarks? Yeah, well, uh, you certainly see the passion come through, Tracy, that's, that's for sure. But I also would add and complement to what we heard there that it's HR is a great partner for us in terms of making sure we have the right programs, policies, the data, the metrics embedded, but it needs to be embedded in all of the business and all that we do. At the end of the day, um, accountability needs to be in the business as well, as HR alone cannot um, make enough of the changes. So, so that's one thought that came to my mind. It's the leaders on the ground that make the hiring decision on an everyday basis. And it's easy for one here and one there to not to say, oh, an exception. But uh, you need that accountability from every leader who are making these decisions on an everyday basis to see a difference at the end, uh, to see an out, a, a real outcome. So I would say ownership by leaders. Uh, and actually, what we've introduced this year at Mercer is put your money where your you know where your mouth is. Is we've linked up uh, diversity measures to the rewards of our key leaders. And you know, it's so funny because you would think that by linking those, it's not really just their reward. It's the reward for the whole company because we've proven what a positive impact diversity has on the bottom line. So um, very, very, uh, very good stuff there. Okay, so the last topic, let's hear from Mary. She's gonna talk about um, mentorship and, and just women promoting women. I've had the pleasure of working around the world, Hong Kong, Singapore, Australia, Mexico, UK, uh, and now in America. And I have to say, I've been confronted with many biases and a lot of inequality at all different levels. But there's always one common thing that's helped me as I've pushed it through, and that there's always been someone that's gone through it before me. And one of the things I encourage every next generation, and even my peers and the people that work within my team, is find that role model, spot that colleague that can help you, that can guide you, that can give you the advice on how you deal with when you come up with a gender bias or you come up against an inequality. How do you push through it? Now, I wouldn't be where I was today if someone hadn't reached in and grabbed me and helped me and given me advice. And I'm always looking, as I said, for that next generation, that next emerging female lead, a leader that's eager to learn more and grow in their careers. 
And I have the pleasure of being the co-lead of the City Women. Um, and it gives me a big platform to go and meet so much talent out there. And with that talent, I always try to make myself really accessible. Um, I encourage people to give me tough questions. I encourage them to be candid with areas they're seeking advice on. So first of all, wow, she's worked in a lot of countries. I I think that's very similar to your career path, Martine. Um, But I guess my biggest reaction to what she had to say is one of the nuggets in there, which is be the example, do the right thing. And I'm just curious what your reaction was to Mary's remarks. Yeah, no, I, I, I loved Mary's remark in the sense that, yes, absolutely, emulation, having someone to look up to and say, oh, Tracy has been able to get to this role. How did she do this? But she also talked about candid conversations. And I think that it's a, uh, it's a call to action. It's a call to action to all the women out there, whether you're you know, uh, growing in your career, reach out, open, be curious, ask these questions of the role model of the woman that you see around you. How did, how did they uh, push through, as Mary said? And vice versa, a call to action to all of us more senior in our roles to say, reach out. It's not always easy for it to be, as she talked about accessibility. So I would have said, uh, even though I've I've put a minute or two more of comments on Mary's comment, they were perfect. (laughs) Yeah, I enjoyed them. So before we close out, any parting advice for our audience? You know, it can be done. We've seen it at Mercer now on senior women. uh, We are at nearing 50%. uh, So we're very proud of our achievements. We're not done yet, uh, but it can be done. It's a little bit, it's it's not complicated at all. Follow your data, be accountable, um, but it's a little bit harder. So be prepared, be patient, work the pipeline, fish in different ponds. It absolutely will be done. Well, I really want to thank you, Martine, for joining us today on this important topic. It is important that we all remain ever vigilant, even in the crisis that we've all been through. And we just have to continue our efforts on diversity so that everyone's organization does not lose any ground. Um, And again, thank you so much. Um, From challenge comes change. And so let's all step up to the challenge and choose, choose to be the challenge. So thank you all. Thank you, Tracy.